JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week July the 19th until July the 23rd. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our uh, disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in, a, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to, ac to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week's uh, calendar looks much lighter than the previous one, with uh, only one central bank deciding on uh, monetary policy, the, the ECB. Taking into account the subdued, the subdued uh, core inflation rate, uh, the dovish remarks by several policymakers and the change in their inflation objective, we believe that uh, the bank will highlight once again the need for extra loose uh, policy for longer. The RBA minutes and the, prelim and the preliminary PMIs uh, from the Eurozone, the UK and the US are also, are also uh, due to be released uh, this week. Now let's take things from the beginning. Monday is a light day in terms of economic data and releases. The only item on the agenda worth mentioning is a speech by, by Bank of England and Monetary Policy Committee member uh, Jonathan Haskell. Last week, Bank of England member Michael Sanders said that economic activity has recovered a bit faster than forecast in May and that it may become appropriate fairly soon to withdraw, to withdraw some stimulus. His comments came after both the headline and core UK CPI rates for June rose more than expected, something that may have prompted some policymakers to change their mind with regards to the near-term future of monetary policy. If Haskell shares a similar view, this could encourage some uh, pound buying as it may increase speculation for a sooner than expected action by the Bank of England, despite officials noting at the latest meeting that uh, they do not want to undermine the recovery by premature tightening. Having said all that though, we prefer to exploit any possible pound gains against the Australian and Canadian dollars. As we noted last week, the Aussie may continue performing, uh, performing poorly due to end of RBA, while the, the Looney could uh, also underperform after the Bank of Canada appeared less uh, hoggish uh, than anticipated. Now on Tuesday, during the Asian session, the RBA releases the minutes of its uh, latest meeting when it announced that uh, it will proceed uh, with more bond purchases beyond September, adding that they will reevaluate things in November. Officials also said that they are planning to keep interest rates at current levels until 2020, and, uh, excuse me, until 2024, in contrast to the RBNZ which uh, some expect to hike as soon as uh, this August. With that in mind, we don't believe that the minutes, uh, the minutes of uh, the meeting uh, can paint a different picture. They may just confirm the bank's uh, dovish approach, something that could encourage more Aussie selling, especially against the Kiwi. As for uh, Tuesday's data, during the Asian session, besides the RBA minutes, we also have, the, we also have Japan's uh, national CPIs for June. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is expected to just tick up to 0.2% year over year from 0.1%. Later in the day, the US housing starts and building permits for June are uh, due to be released, with uh, both expected to have increased somewhat. Wednesday's calendar is light as well, with the only item worth mentioning being Australia's preliminary retail sales, which are forecast to have slid 0.5% month over month after increasing 0.4%. Now on Thursday, we have the main event of uh, the week, and this is uh, the ECB monetary policy decision. At their latest meeting, policymakers of the central bank kept all their uh, policy settings unchanged, noting that uh, 
uh, their pandemic emergency uh, uh, their pandemic emergency purchase program will continue to run to run at a significant higher pace the bank raised its uh, 2021 and 2022 gdp and inflation forecasts but at the press conference following the decision ECB president lagarde clarified that headline inflation will remain below target over the forecast horizon she admitted that they were somewhat more optimistic about the economic outlook than uh, three months ago but highlighted that the decision uh, statement was uh, unanimously supported, suggesting that uh, tapering was not on any official's uh, uh, mind at the moment. Since then, both the headline and core CPI rate uh, ticked, uh, uh, ticked down to 1.9 and 0.9% uh, year over year from 2% and 1% respectively. Despite the headline rate staying near 2%, the core one is still decently below that mark, adding credence to the view of uh, policymakers like ECMB President Lagarde, Chief Economist Philip Lane, and Executive Board Member Fabio Banetta, who agree that monetary and fiscal policy support should not be withdrawn prematurely. The only one whose comments were somewhat more hoggish was uh, Governing Council Member Jens uh, Whitman, who said that inflation is not dead and that he wants to discuss when emergency ends from a monetary policy point of view. On top of that, a couple of weeks ago, the bank set a new, a new 2% inflation objective, saying that it could tolerate temporary moves beyond uh, that mark. Remember that the prior target was to achieve inflation below but close to 2%. Now, our view all this suggests that the bank is likely to keep interest rates at historic uh, lows for uh, longer and perhaps continue with its uh, asset purchase programs for uh, longer. That said, with uh, Whitman arguing uh, that it will not be right for the pandemic emergency purchase program to continue running after the pandemic is over, his colleagues may just decide to replace it with another form of uh, quantitative easing when it comes to an end. Such a dovish stance is likely to weigh on the euro, who could uh, suffer the most against currencies, the central banks of which are already discussing the timing of when they may start raising interest rates, the likes of uh, the US dollar and uh, the New Zealand dollar. As uh, for the rest of, um, of uh, Thursday releases, we have uh, the US uh, existing home sales for June, which similarly to the housing starts and building permits, are expected to have increased somewhat. Finally, on Friday, we have the preliminary PMIs uh, for July from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. In the Euro area, the manufacturing index is expected to decline to 62.5 from, 60, uh, from 63.4, while the services one is forecast to rise to 59.6 from 58.3. This is likely to take the composite index slightly higher to 60 from 59.5. Although this would mean some further recovery in the bloc's economy, we doubt that it would be enough to lift the euro, especially with the coronavirus delta variant posing fresh risks to the economy and the ECMB pledged to keep its policy extra loose for longer. In the UK, all indices are expected to have declined somewhat, while in the US, uh, while the US ones are forecast to come, to come in on, uh, on the mixed uh, side. Manufacturing one is expected to slide somewhat, while the services one is forecast to have inched fractionally higher. Now, the UK retail sales for June and Canada's retail sales for May are also due to be released. In the UK, both headline and core sales are expected to have rebounded 0.5 and 0.7% month over month, respectively, after sliding 1.4 and 2.1% in May. Uh, as for Canada's data, both, headla both headline and core sales are expected to have continued to slide, but at a slower pace than in April. Last week, the Bank of Canada appeared less hoggish than expected, saying that they continue to see the output gap closing in the second half of 2022, which suggests that their expectations over when they may start rising interest rates have not come forth. The Canadian dollar has been underselling interest uh, since then, and another slide in retail sales may keep the currency under pressure. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. 
If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.